So the first thing we're going to uh, look at is parsing JSON using Python. And we're going to do that um, building on top of what we did in 101 and 201. Um, but in 101, if you guys did that already, we used a package called, or a, a library called requests. In this one, we're actually going to use URL, uh, the URL lib. Um, so just another way to make those REST API calls um, for in, in a different Python package. So um, we're going to do that. And so what we are going to look at is, one sec, I want to make sure that my mouse works here. Can you guys see that code OK? I'm not sure if it's too big or not. Oh, yeah. All right, that looks good. So we're going to start with getting information from the Mobility Services Engine. If you guys aren't familiar with the Mobility Services Engine, it is part of the uh, Connected Mobile Experience solution. And what it does is it takes information from the wireless LAN controller, which is getting information from the access points about your location or your device's location in space and does all the math and figures out that you're probably right here. So um, what we're going to do is actually look at um, getting <coughs> excuse me, access point information from the mobility services engine. So um, this code's pretty straightforward. Um, we're importing the URL lib dot request pack, uh, um, library. And then we're specifically importing the request and URL open methods. And so we're making a call directly uh, to the mobility services sandbox. Um, and uh, we're saving the request into the rec, the req variable. And so you see, instead of what we did in, in um, 101, where we built out the actual string, and um, we're just doing this very simply and um, send, giving it the string right away. And so the other thing that we need to add in here that was a little different from what you may have seen previously um, is that we need to actually authorize the user to use the APIs. The mobility services engine requires that um, a user be set up on the platform to be able to use the APIs and actually have to be given um, different types of functionality to use different types of APIs. So this particular user has read-write capabilities, so it can um, call the APIs that, do, that are gets, uh, but it can also do things, um, a, the APIs that post as well. Um, but some users are only allowed to do gets because they they're not trusted to be able to um, uh, change information on the platform. Um, we're going to make the call and save the response into the response variable and we're going to decode it and dump it out. So let's see what happens when we uh, run that one. Get a few jigs on. So we made that call. And is that too big? No, nope, that's good too. So this looks like a mess of information. But what you're not seeing here are the curly brackets that are um, that you are notice are familiar with some of the JSON objects. And the reason that is, is because this is XML. So the mobility services engine, at least 8.0, I haven't looked at the uh, newest version, 10.0 yet, um, 8.0 defaulted to XML. So that's why that output's there. I didn't put anything in, in the headers to tell them that I wanted JSON back. So of course, that's what we're going to do next. <laughs> so if we look at the next step in this, I'm going to send a different or an additional header that tells me that I want this information back in JSON. Um, if you guys did notice, the URL is different. It's the same box. We just have it um, the IP address there instead. So we'll run two. We'll see what gives us differently. And now we see the curly and square brackets that you're familiar with in the JSON objects. So same data, though, exact same data, just formatted differently. And um, that determines how you're, the, the format, obviously, is the, the, what determines how you're going to parse it. So and the reason we like to use JSON is because there are some nice packages in Python to do that. So 
the next step in this iteration is to go through and import that JSON object. We saw this in 101 and 201, I believe. Um, making the request, adding our headers in, um, and what we're going to do now, actually, I'm gonna, sh we s saw the response string from the earlier one was just kind of raw JSON. It wasn't formatted in that pretty way that makes it easy to read. Um, but this time what we're gonna do now is um, call the json.dumps uh, method, take that JSON object that we get in our response, um, and you know, do, do the indentation, make it look nice. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So now we see it kind of split out and it's all pretty and nice and can kind of pull out information based on what we're seeing um, specifically. Uh, the thing we're going to be looking at a little bit later in this in this particular area is the APs that are defined on the mobility services engine. So the next step is to actually pull out those access points. And what we're going to do is pull, uh, pull out that access point information and then write it in a nice pretty string so that you don't have to sift through all that JSON data um, you're going to have the actual application do it for you. So again, same stuff, nothing new here, um, until we get to the <laughs> access points area. Now the cool thing with the, um, the JSON.loads is that it loads the JSON text into a JSON object that makes it very easy to, um, if you know the structure of the, J of the JSON coming back, to pull information out of it. So um, what's really nice in a, a lot of different parsers, you'll have to write some extra code to figure out um, how the JSON's built and uh, pull actual individual pieces of information out of it. But with J this um, json.loads uh, method, it gives you the ability to, it dumps everything into arrays that are easy to access. So what this is doing right here is it's telling um, the the JSON or it's um, we're telling it to take the JSON object and pull out every floor and access point that we have defined and put that into an array called access points and then all we have to do is iterate through those in a for loop, grab all the access points, dump them out into um, a couple of string or in, into some strings that call out the name and the um, MAC address, and it looks like we're pulling out the IP address as well. So um, let's see what that looks like then. This is four. So now we see, and this is a little big, but now we see we have the access point name, um, the MAC address, and the IP address. Um, all nice and pretty, but it's pulled out of that JSON with that, the, the, you know, those like four lines of code where it's, okay, let's take this information, put it into a point, an array about access points, and again, to, to do this, you do have to know um, how the JSON's built, and that's where that documentation comes into play. So <coughs> if it has good documentation, which the, the new mobility services engine does, uh, they use IO docs, um, it'll tell you, okay, you're looking for a, an attribute called floor, here's its value, you're looking for an attribute called access point, here's its value, and it'll, build, it'll show you the hierarchy of how that content is built within the JSON so that when you do then start building your application, you can say, all right, I know how this is built, I know how to get to that information, and you can just go from there. Any questions? Nope, okay. So, I think there is one more set step to this. Um, let's check the learning lab real quick. Mm -hmm. We did that, JSON and XML. We just loop through a Python array. And then, oh, this is just the additional resource. So that's the first part. So we just kind of walk through 
coding 202 on the learning labs, and now we're going to build on top of that and go to coding 203. Um, so let's uh, reload that just so we have a reference. Coding 203. This one's pretty short, but it's fun. Now all we're doing is getting input from a user. Um, Python makes it pretty easy to take in input on the command line. And uh, if we actually look at the code for git input, um, all we're doing is taking input, what's your favorite vegetable, saving that to this favorite veg variable, printing it out, and then same thing with sauce, and then concatenating all that into strings. Very, very simple, straightforward. Git input.py. Make sure I'm in the right folder. Getting input, okay. Okay, so, and that file was called git-input.py. Someone yell out a vegetable. What? Carrot? Okay. I like carrots too. My favorite sauce is, let's do a bechamel. That sounds yummy. I like carrot with bechamel in it. That actually does sound really good. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> pretty easy, pretty straightforward. We'll have something a little more complicated later when we're looking at the uh, taking input for dealing with um, uh, network devices in from the APIC EM. So, but just a fun little intro to um, getting input in Python. So then the next step is to um, read a file. I believe so. Let me double check that. Coding, coding, coding. Okay, yeah. So n now what we're going to do is jump into actually reading a file, a text file from um, Python, but we're going to do it in, a, in some iterative steps. We're going to read um, initially the whole file, and then we'll read line by uh, a line at a time, and then we'll read um, lines within a loop so you can see how it gets built on top of each other. So the first, <clears throat> the first uh, iteration is just reading the whole file. So um, what we're looking at here is in uh, we don't need to import any specific um, libraries like we do when we're making the, a the uh, API requests because um, the open object or the open method is native to, to Python, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, what happens here is that the file is actually open and it um, saves the content to the my file object in this R mode, which is for read only. Now you can see in the um, in the comments that you can do R for read only, W for want to write to the file. And we'll see a write to the file a little bit later. So we're going to read the whole file at once, print it out, and then in, if you're using open, you have to close the file or it gets um, hung in memory. And if you do that a lot, it could crash your computer. So make sure you always close your files. I'm going to show you another way a little bit later that closes the files automatically so you don't have to worry about it. But just for teaching purposes, make sure you close your files. <laughs> Um, so this should be CD coding 204. Um, reading dash file. Sorry, one second. 
two, two. One or two. You guys see the folder? <laughs> oh, there we go. Reading a file. She made it tricky on me. Okay. Or not. Apparently don't know how to type. Reading a oh. I see. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So we want to read the file. That first file was read dash file dot py. py read dash file dot py. So we're just reading the whole file in and printing it out. Nothing fancy. Sorry it took so long to get to that. Um, next, we're going to now read the f uh, read one line of the file. And to do that, we're going to, um, again, open the uh, file, save it to that object, read one line, and then print it out, and then close. So we should just get one line back then. So, up. Oh. PY read dash file. Okay. Read only the first line of the file. Okay. This is the first line, absolutely the first line. So we know that that worked. Because we know that our text file, and I should have actually pointed this out, um, looks like this. So this is the actual file that we're reading. There's two lines in it, but we're going to walk through and show you how to read each one. Um, now we're going to read file in a loop so we can get the whole file back then. This is a little more complicated, but <laughs> we're putting the text object or the file object into, into a my file object variable. Um, we're starting at one and then we're incrementing through each line in the object or in the file object, printing that out and then incrementing um, the uh, counter variable so that it tells us when the, uh, which line we're at. So it starts at one, and then it should go to two. So if we're gonna read file loop, read file. So we saw them, uh, we start out by printing out loop through and read each line. This is the first line, putting in a, a hard return and then line two, this is the second line. So if we look at the code, um, that's exactly what we would have expected um, for that particular uh, file as it was running. And then now we're going to move on to that other method I was talking about. So we were actively opening and closing the file in those previous examples, but now we're gonna use with. And with is nice because it allows you to um, it opens and closes the file for you, so don't have to worry about that. There's better exception handling when reading the file, and um, so it's just a it's a better way to deal with file um, file I/O. So, but you'll see the result of using it is essentially the same. And the way that you call this is by using with, and then open, and then it's telling you what type of object it is, and you can call this whatever you want but it's then going to loop through all the lines in, those, in that file and dump that information out <coughs> into the command line. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And you can assume that it'll probably look very similar to what we've seen before. So read file with. So again, same output, but a little bit easier to deal with. You don't have to worry about um, opening and closing your file, which is or closing your file, which could cause a lot of problems if you have a lot of file, um, if you're going through a lot of files and, and not closing them. So, 
that's that. And then the, really the meat of this is, well, we actually want to deal with some real live data. So let's actually look at a JSON file. So we are looking at this, my JSON.json. Um, this is very similar information to what we were looking at if the APIC EM APIs. Um, so it's giving us the network device ID and um, some tag information. Uh, but this is the actual JSON we're going to be reading and parsing in this particular um, example. So uh, because we're dealing with JSON, we're importing JSON, opening the file um, using our with method that we just saw previously. Um, and then we're going to put that JSON object into a variable called data um, using that loads method that we talked about earlier. Um, and then we're going to iterate through that particular data object and print that information out. And actually, it looks like we're going to pull out the network device ID. And similar to what we saw with the mobility services engine data, um, we're looking at a response, um, a, an incremented variable that we're starting at zero, and then the network device ID. So if we actually look at the data really quickly, Response is our top level object. And so if we looked at, that's the first part of the array that we want to look at. Um, the I is actually counting each individual um, uh, network device within that response. So it's telling me that um, I want to actually go through and pick out the network device ID within each of these um, sets of uh, curly brackets, sets of attributes. So if we look at that response, we'll start at the um, index starts at zero. So we're going to go zero, one, two. And then we're going to pull the network device ID out of that information. And then uh, we don't need to do, do this, the file.close. So I'm actually have to ask Mandy why she put that in there. <laughs> um, so read JSON from file, see what that looks like. So very simply pulls out the network device ID, prints them out in a row. Pretty straightforward, any questions? It's hot, it's hot in here, right? <laughs> okay, so, okay, now we know how to read stuff. How do we actually write files? Let's move on to, I believe this is coding 205, but we'll get started with that. Um, similar to what we do with reading, but we're gonna change the argument for when you open the file, you're now opening it to write, and then we're going to write a line and close it. Pretty straightforward. Right, that's right. Go through this again. So the first example shows us write-file.py. Right. All right, so nothing happened because we didn't actually tell it, or it looks like nothing happened because we didn't tell it to um, actually print anything out on the console. But if we look at um, my new file.txt in Coding 205. Let's go to write a file. So we see I just created my new file at uh, 131. If we open that up, the gray penguin flies at noon. So successful. I'd have overwritten it. <laughs> um, so now we have the gray uh, penguin flies at noon. Now we want to append to that file. So we want to open a file that already exists and then write a new line to it. This is pretty common when you're doing logging as well. Um, so uh, we are going to actually print out that we're writing to a file so we know that something's happening and our application's running. 
um, we're going to open a new file using our width, um, write that we are Cisco developers are Leet and DevNet developers rock, <laughs> and then um, we are going to, um, you know what, I skipped over a step. I wanted to write a file using width, but because we went over width in, in the read, we'll kind of walk through it this direction. Um, but uh, then we will open my new file too as a file, and then um, so what we're seeing is we're adding, uh, we're opening the file, writing two lines, doing some other stuff. So this do some stuff outside of the width block is calculations, um, making REST API calls to get more information. All right, I have that information. Reopen the file, and then keep uh, and then write more stuff into it. So this is write file append. So we see the things that we printed to the screen, writing a file, do some stuff outside the block. If we actually look at the file that was written in 134, my new file too, you should see four lines. Oh, not good. Let's see here. Let's see what happened here. My new file two dot text as file. Hmm. I'll have to check that code because that looks like that should work. Um. So we went through writing a file with width. Uh, let's try that. I think that maybe that because I went out of order. Uh, that's why. Okay. Uh, write file using width. Okay. Okay, cool. And then let's try the append this time. Keeps overwriting it. Interesting. Right. I'll have to look into why that is. It should give you four lines of text and not um, not just two. So it looks like it's not actually appending. So there's a bug in that code. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but again, the thing that we're really going to want to look at is writing to a file with uh, writing JSON to a file. So we might make an API call and want to dump that log out to um, a, a file system because we're not going to necessarily use it today or you need to look at something later. Um, so, you guys are familiar with importing requests. We're going to import JSON. Those are libraries that we're going to use the request to make the API calls, the JSON to process the um, JSON that comes back. Um, this looks a lot like the 201 code because we're actually going to go to the uh, APIC EM sandbox and um, grab information directly from that. Uh, so, we're building out our controller URL. We want to get our devices, so um, we're adding on to that controller URL. We're concatenating the network device call. Um, and then we're going to get the response. Um, again, I should note, we're passing in the get devices URL that we just built. And then this particular variable is telling it to ignore um, any uh, SSL certificate issues. Um, if you were building a real application, you would not do this. Um, and then we're taking the JSON response and we're pulling out the devices and printing them, um, or and writing them to a file. <coughs> Excuse me. And so um, we're opening our file with width, um, with width, 
and then we're iterating through each item, um, through each ID, and pulling out the type. So um, you'll notice that we're setting the parent to the response. And so there's our children within the response um, that we're calling item. Um, and they have an ID value and a type value. So that's where we're getting that actual information from. So let's see if we can get this to work right. JSON to file.py. So it printed out devices. Okay, cool. So we just saw that list of devices file change, um, and we got uh, three because we told it to start with the index of one and pull out three. So, success. So that is a quick tutorial on writing to a file. <laughs> Any questions there? Pretty straightforward. Maybe a little dry, but necessary. It's very useful information. Um, the last part of this, I believe, is um, one second, is actually putting it all together. So let's make sure we're on track there. Oh, I do need to go over the logging module real quick. So let's see if we can do that pretty quickly. Um, if we go to let me log in real quick here. And then this is under coding 206. Um, the logging module in Python is pretty nice and it's pretty easy to use. Um, but the basic code is you import the logging module and then there are different levels of logging and the default is warning. Um, I believe there's information. Um, yeah, so here are the different levels. Debug. You would put debug in to help you while you were actually writing your application. Um, info is just logs to say, OK, I, I made a request to the APIC EM console or uh, controller to get the devices, and I got a response back. Um, warning, which is the default, something unexpected has happened, but the application can still run. Um, error is a potentially bad issue. And then a critical means your application is either down or probably going to go down. So um, let's actually take a look at um, that, the simple logging. Uh, so if we look at the code, we're importing logging. Um, the basic config, we're setting to info. Um, so that includes, oh, that is one other thing I should mention. So if you do a level down, excuse me, if you do a level down in the debug, so th if you do critical, um, you can um, perform logging up the stack. But if you do debug, you can't go down to critical. So because we're setting it info, or um, yeah, because we're setting it info, we can also do warning. I said that backwards. <laughs> we can we can't do debug if we're at info. So it's uh, top down not bottom up, like I just said. Excuse me, bad information there. So we can do warning and info because we're setting the logging level at info. So let's run that. that one easy on me. OK. And that's all that is. It's just printing out information about what's going on with the application. So then the next step in that 
is to change the debug level, or the logging level to debug. And then because now we're debugged, we can print out a debug, we can print out an info, we can print out a warning. Uh, we were actually writing to a file in that one. So that's uh, sent to mylog.log. Um, if we look at uh, logging step two, where do we open that file? Oh, it's because um, if we go to base config, we set the file name. I skipped over that. So base config file name mylog.log. And so mylog.log just got updated um, with <laughs> those particular uh, logging messages. And then in step three, we're setting that file name. We're adding a date timestamp. Um, so it requires a format, um, the level names, uh, and the messages that we're adding, and then a format for when this thing is actually happening. And um, we're setting that logging level to debug. So, but again, we're sending very similar messages. So let's logging step three. And then we should see in my log.log .log and update. Now we have a timestamp for just now. This is your debug message. This is your info message. This is your warning. So again, not too terribly complicated, but very useful. So we've gone through that step. Let me see if there's any more in the logging just to be covered. So we covered the logging. So now we can kind of put it all together. And so that's covered in our last lab, 207. Putting it all together. So let's start at step one. So this is going to go through everything we just did, entering data, um, taking that data, and saving it to a file. Um, getting information in from the APIC EM APIs and saving that JSON to a file and then using the logging module. So, what we're going to want to do, I just want to make sure I get the right file name here. Um, I believe, create device list. Yeah. So now we're importing requests, we're importing JSON, we're importing logging, because we're going to be using all of those to do all this fun stuff now. We saw the basic config for logging, file name. We want to make sure that we know when these things happen so, and what happened. So we have the format for the message, we have the date format, and then we have the level that we're running at. And we're going to, since we're writing our application right now, we're going to go to debug. Um, and then adding in some logging information that we're starting the application. And then you'll see these logging messages throughout the application so that when you go back and say, hey, what happened? Oh, it broke at this point. I was asking the user for the device type, but I got a, I got a 404 error because the endpoint was wrong. Um, so uh, those are the kinds of things you would put in with logging. So um, what we're going to ask the user for input is do they want to create a list of routers or switches? Um, and then depending on which choice they make, um, that will determine the type uh, that we send into our API call. Uh, logging info, just a little more logging information. Um, we are also going to um, ask for a file name that we want to save this to. And then you guys have seen this a million times before already probably today. We're going to build the um, API call by taking in the controller URL concatenating that with what we want to get um, from the network device information. In this instance, we're going to get the count. Um, we will call, then make the call to the uh, APIC EM API, get that response, and dump that into uh, JSON. 
Now this one's pretty easy because we're just getting a, a one value back from the count, so we're not iterating through uh, any arrays that might come back. Do some login, <laughs> do some debug logging, um, so that we know that uh, our everything worked out okay. Um, we're also then going to get um, each in, or then we're going to get the list of the network devices after calling the count. Um, we will also be putting that into a JSON object, you know, very similar to what we've done before. Uh, debug that just so we know that everything came back okay. And then we're going to parse through the response and then dump that information into a file. So we're opening that file with width. We're doing a write on that. Um, we're logging that the file is open and now we're going to start writing into it. And then we're going to do that file.write with the different types of devices. And then, um, or I'm sorry, the type that we had the user enter, router or switch. And then for each of the, those items that meet that type, so if it's a router, or if we choose router, it'll only show routers. If we choose switches, it should only choose switches. And then it'll finish writing and then close the program and log that that has happened. So what we should see, just to make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row, my log.log .log will be our log file. We'll take user input for the device list. And then we should see, um, I don't think we'll actually see anything printed out in our console. Uh, no. No. Oh, uh, finished writing list. I think that should show up. And that's about it. So let's all see if this actually works. <laughs> so let's go back to coding 207. Sure, I go to the right directory. Putting it all together. All right. Oh, putting it together. Okay. And now we're going to run create device list.py. Help if I type the file name in, right? And go. Uh, let's do switches. My switches. Text. Waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Finish writing list. Now, if we go to that directory, putting it together, we should see my switches. And then, if we open that up in Notepad, success. Now we have a list of switches. Um, and everything is good and it worked. So, hooray! <laughs> um, Let's see if there's anything else worthwhile calling out in that particular file. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you. That's right. Um, we also logged that information. So we wrote that file, but we also did the log. Um, and so it looks like, let's go down to the time. So we. Looks like the time's off a little bit. I'm looking at the wrong file. I would help if I was looking at the right file. So we saw all of those log messages that we had put in. Um, it looks like it's calculating the time wrong, but um, it's we saw that begin. We asked the user for the device type. Um, This doesn't look great at all. Hold on one second. Oh, there we go. That's today's. So we were just appending to the log file. <laughs> so this is today's 0608 2015. Uh, Begin asking for the type, device type. We chose switch. Um, and we wanted to save that to my switches.txt. Went through, told us um, that we were, uh, which API call we were making, um, the response that we got back, the raw response that we, we got back. Um, in JSON, 
Um, and so what this is, is if there had been a fault or something, we can go back and, and look in here and say, oh, I see what happened. The endpoint got corrupted or the count was zero or something like that. So log files, um, I don't, you guys probably do this stuff all the time, very useful when um, debugging code or trying to figure out what problems have occurred. So are there any, um, are, we only have a few minutes left. I know this stuff was a little, like, seemed a lot, a little simple, but it's very important that you know these things when starting to write applications because these are the useful bits to take all the cool stuff that come back from the that comes back from the APIs and actually do something of value with them. So if you guys have any questions, now's the time. If not, I really appreciate uh, I appreciate you sticking in with me in this afternoon, especially after lunch. Um, I do want to mention the activity code for this particular session is, is right there. Um, continue to do the sessions and uh, hit up the learning labs and earn credit to, for your DevNet Loot Scoot prizes. And uh, we'll be here all week. So any questions before you finish? Go ahead. Here, one sec. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, error, and error and link yes. is easier with the, the with command. Uh, I'm not familiar with, with this. Or can you comment on this? Can you just with some the things? exception handling? The exception um, handling. You mentioned that it's, it's better, it's, it's easier with the So, uh, yes, <laughs> excuse me. So if uh, you run into a situation where the, maybe the file doesn't exist, there, there are built-in methods for you to um, check that. So you can say, instead of, um, so if you're just gonna use open, it might not check, and it'll actually just quit your application. Whereas if you're using with, you can put in different uh, lines of code that says, all right, I want to open this file, but if it doesn't exist, do something else. So it gives you that, uh, that ability to handle situations that aren't what you're expecting, so exception handling, and um, do something else that keeps the application running. Or maybe, the, um, maybe you have a, a file I.O. problem, um, and you just need to close and reopen the application. You can do something like that with with. One sec. It is, it is still uh, with, with the try keyword and accept? No, no. but okay, same, idea. Okay. same idea. Same idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. All right. I think that's it. Thank you, guys.